What is it? Computer control vehicle many parts are covered by a long term factory warranty. Should only be repaired by a factory otherwise technician. Oh, all, all right. right. Somebody has noticed that I don't really wear the most uh, really exotic shoes. Somebody sent these to us and said, hey, try them out. Let us know what you think. So, huge thank you. There they are. And there's steel toe cap. Several people have asked about taking the shifter apart and using our rebuild kit. And watch later in the video, I'm gonna do a really detailed removal of the cage and the ball and how to install it with just basic hand tools. So hopefully this helps you out. Stay tuned for that later in the video. So a torque sensor that he purchased, he wants installed at the same time. It's a real common problem with S2000s. The other thing is it needs a clutch. We're gonna do an OEM factory clutch. This is the boot and the retaining clip. This is what we sell as part of your master rebuild kit. This foam here is part of our install kit. The whole reason for this here is to isolate some of the sound, make it a little quieter inside. This rubber boot here seals the bottom of it. So Honda do a really good job to isolate this. He wants to do a shift to rebuild. This only has 47,000 miles. But you can kind of, you see how much that moves. It's not a lot, but it's got looseness to it. Let me take that nut off so you can kind of hear it. See how much movement is in there. Well, when you remove all that looseness, it makes the shifter feel absolutely terrific. You might've seen some of our past videos. And I do appreciate the people that comment on there and say how much better it is. Cause it's, it's always nice to get other people's opinion, but we're going to replace that. Before you take that part out, if you buy one of our kits or if you're buying it, you know, parts yourself, Take this foam out first, that way you don't drop the foam particles in that shifter that has grease, and then it's a pain to get out. But this is what the stuff turns into. And like I said, some of it is worse than this. This is hard, but it turns to like a glue mush. So there you go, see what it looks like under there. Somebody asked me how do I replace this because I glossed over it. I did a full shifter rebuild video. The first thing I always tell you is take a picture of it when you get it out. Note that this little raised piece here, note which direction that goes in relation to this square right here and the angle of the shifter. Take a couple of pictures, make a diagram, just so you don't have to do it twice. Uh, this ball, told you many times, make sure the new one, you put it in some nice warm water. Today in Florida, it's kind of chilly, so I, I do it anyway. But when you push that ball in there, this thing will crack. And this thing is 24 bucks. Believe it or not, this is the most expensive part of the two. So let me get some of this grease off here. I'm not gonna use my hands because obviously I got, you know, my hands have been working on cars forever and building stuff. Uh, not saying I have really strong hands, but I might have stronger hands than you and I don't wanna show you a technique that you can't do, if that makes sense. Okay, so this I usually take off with my hands, but I figure you guys will have a vise. So two wrenches across your vise right here. And if you space them far enough apart that they're touching just the cage, you should be able to give this a plunk with a hammer and knock that out without getting your hands too beat up. Uh, just talking to George, I just came back from Virginia. <laughs> it was in the 20s and I can't imagine working on cars when it's cold because you touch your hands wrong and they, you know, you cut your hands and it just hurts to work on this stuff. We're, we're kind of spoiled here. so. I want to see if this works and if it does maybe you can implement this maybe you can cut a piece of wood and put a slot in it so you can slide the shifter in but i'm thinking i give this a quick plunk i'm going to use a rubber mallet this bushing little ball here is going to get replaced so i don't really care about it but i still wouldn't use a metal hammer just in case it damages the metal ball underneath so i'm going to support the shifter with my other hand so it doesn't fall on the floor fingers crossed to give this a clout you ready <laughs> that's how you do it in one go hopefully that gives you an idea it doesn't take that much force all you're doing is pulling back on that cage and if you did it right you took a picture before you took it apart so you know which way the new parts go on now we have our shifter cleaned up there is the ball there is the cage this is important use the grease that we're providing this is the best grease there's obviously a lot of options out there. This is the super high temp grease. We use it around anything hot, obviously release bearing and such, but it's just my opinion, the best grease. So if you buy it from us, you're gonna get that grease. 
Now, this, very important, go ahead and put it in your warm water and let it sit for a minute or so. When you put this on here, what I like to do is grease everything. Grease this, grease that. There's plenty of grease in there. There's more than you're going to need. But I'm all about lathering it up. Same with this. Grease it on the inside of here and on the outside. This is going to swivel on here, but this also slides a little inside the shifter. I'll show you that here in a minute when the car is back on the ground. I'll show you because I'm going to clean the inside of that too. So let's go ahead and get that happening. Now I'll sat here behind our LHT sign. This is the S2000 Homecoming Cup from 2010 that I went to and really saddens me that this got knocked off the shelf and broken but I used to use this to warm up the water. 2010 and it took a lot of convincing for my wife to let me and my friend Mike disappear to California, hang out with a bunch of S2000 guys and then ended up in Vegas for a couple of days. So. This is what I'm going to use now. This is our new cup. Oh, look at that. There we go. So use your same vise or piece of wood that you might have cut. All you're going to do is hold the outside and you're going to push this shifter down. Make sure it's greased all the way. Make sure your orientation is correct. I'll put a picture on the screen so you can verify it. Check it and double check it. You shouldn't need to warm this cage, but if we push this down, there she goes. All right, so now we have our nice warm pivot ball right here. To keep this nice and warm and not to chill it down, I put the grease on our shifter and then just sit this down and then this should just push right in there. And there we go, and if all goes well, it doesn't crack here because this is where it would crack these slots down here. This is all together now. Next thing is, you see how the grease is squished out between the cage right here? That gives that a nice, smooth feel. We're going to lather grease all the way around here and here and insert it back in the transmission. The car's only got 47,000 miles, but it's not that it's wore out, but it's more war than we would usually see. A lot of hot spots all the way around here, so it's been a lot of slipping, a lot of heat in that clutch. People ask us all the time, how long should my clutch last? And it varies so much. It could last 500 miles. It could last 200,000 miles. Uh, you can see actually how dirty the bearing is, how much clutch material has been in there. New Nietzsche Pilot Bearing. I've shown you how to install these many times, but you can use a socket that fits the outside of the race. Don't put any pressure on the inside. You'll damage it and make sure it's clean. You see there's a little bit of debris in there. Let's make sure this is nice and clean. All right, so we're in the car putting the shifter in. Like John had mentioned, there can be some corrosion on the inside of this. It'd be easier for you to see if you remove the spring, which usually stays in. But otherwise, this all looks fairly good. You feel in here too. Feel for ridges or anything, you know, sus suspect. But otherwise, this looks pretty good. We're going to take our new shifter parts, all nice and greased up, put the spring back in and get it installed. Also what I found helpful is if you put the spring all the way in, down, put it in reverse, the shifter will hold itself there without bolts in it so it's much easier to put the bolts back in. So there is the new foam, I've just handed it to George. This part is in good shape, we're not going to sell him a master rebuild kit. This just needs a quick clean, because all the tabs are there, you look at the tabs, because I removed it properly, they're not broken. But with some camera magic. I want to clean this. Magic! You guys thought I was going to replace it, didn't you? So if this video gets 3,000 likes, actually no, 30,000 likes, I'll show you how to do it. <laughs> wow, look at that. Yeah. That's what the original one looked like. Now that's a new one. Okay, so that one bounces back and stays. Yeah, that fine. We lose out it's the floor. It's gone, but... But that one, no. you crush it and it stays the same shape. It's beautiful. All right, so I'm back in the car. I wanted to show you the wiggle because we did it before. Look at that. There's like nothing now. It pushes down and it's smooth. That's so much more precise feeling. Beautiful. You want to say it still runs? 
Are the wheels off the ground? Now they are. Oh yeah. So this is something that is really, really OCD. If you want to break in your clutch with no weight on the wheels, <laughs> this is something I do. I know, I'm just crazy. I usually put like half a mile on this before even the car leaves the shop. Even if the customer doesn't know I do it, I do it. Just because I want to give the clutch the very easiest start in life. Right? Beautiful. By the time you see this video, this car will be done, but we did film it and we will show you what we're doing to it. This, of course, is a 2008 S2000 CR in Apex Blue. Well, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again because I really mean it. I truly love my job. I have passion for this, which means I truly care about it. I think about it a lot. I don't take it for granted. When a customer sends a car over a long distance, I know what they've gone through to get it to us. That just makes us want to try even harder. So this car, let me show you real quick. 127,000 miles. That is a good thing because these cars are designed to be driven and it's such a beautiful car and such a fun car to drive. On any car, what's important to me are the things that you touch and see every day that turns a car from either a really nice car you feel good about driving or it makes it feel like a turd. And I say that just because a few little things add up it makes the car kind of annoying. Like I've always said, if the shifter feels yucky, feels loose, it's rattly, that brings the car down. The steering wheel, you touch it every day. This is a good looking steering wheel, but the leather tends to get trashed. So this has been recovered, makes it really, really nice. Also the clutch and the brake. If the clutch has an annoying click, that will make it annoying too. That is a brand new mass cylinder and brand new clutch. It feels slick as can be. Brakes feel good. The door handle feels good. The latches, the locks, whenever those things are loose and rattly, it makes the car feel worse than what it is. That's one of those important things that I can't stress enough to fix all the little things on your car because it makes a big difference overall. We'll just give this a road test and it should be ready to go. All the way, make sure we did a good job. We'll make sure they go over it. You like the stereo wire? Yeah, it's always my favorite. I know, it just, I try not to get involved in them because we've changed so many stereo wires you over the years. You don't want to get involved, but there's a grommet right down there. I know. Send it down that side of the car. Don't come across a hot sauce and then go down that side of the car. You could go down this side just as easy. Usually the amp is on this side of the car anyways, so that's where the spare tire it's is. It's in the spare tire well, so yeah. So just about every time, your power wire should go down the side of the car anyways. We end up getting involved, we end up doing all those things for free and we enjoy it, but we got to work too. All right guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the, the clutch with a little bit of shifter knowledge in there. And we'll see you on the next video. Don't forget, enjoy your S2000.